it's lagging a little today. There, we're on the air. Hey, Tell folks. Mike. Hey. <laughs> Hang on. I, I, just hit yes, buddy. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead and just press continue watching. It's all right. I'll be right. Th Give me one second, buddy. Hey, folks. Thanks for joining the Banff Podcast. This is Mike Lafferty, and I am babysitting today because kindergarten ended yesterday, and summer camp doesn't start till Wednesday. So say hi, Connor. Hi. There we go. And Hello. Today, uh, we've got Steve Kenson, legendary RPG designer. How are you doing, Steve? I'm very well, thanks. Glad to be back. Yeah. And we have Norbert Franz. How are you doing, Norbert? I'm doing well. It's been a good week. All right, good. Uh, we have Alice Pang and Brandon Powers co-hosting. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Wonderful. So, uh, Happy to be here. And we are here. Our main mission is to talk about the German translation of icons. Um, and we're also going to touch on, touch on some other subjects. Steve, you want to talk about um, the Expanse RPG just briefly. Do you want to do that at the top of the show so we don't forget about it once the Icons uh, Love Fest starts? Sure thing. Um, so I'm going to as... step away for just one second and get Super Wings playing for my boy again. I, I will be right back. Alice and Brandon can, uh, can uh, hand in all, all, handle all the hosting duties for like two minutes while I'm gone, okay? <laughs> sure. Right back. So um, as folks may know, uh, Green Running Publishing did a very successful Kickstarter for the Expanse role-playing game. Uh, and the game is finally uh, shipping. Uh, so uh, books are, are making their way out to the backers and making their way uh, into distribution. Um, and uh, we're really looking forward to uh, folks having their finally having their books in hand. Uh, backers, of course, have had the um, PDF edition uh, of the of the core book and its associated support products for a while now since the book went to print. But now, uh, finally, books are printed and they're heading out to people, and we're very excited for people to finally have them and see them and uh, have the opportunity to use them. So, and that be something available through stores? You mentioned it's going to distribution right now? Yes, uh, it is in pre-order right now on the Green Running website. Um, so folks who missed the Kickstarter uh, but want to pre-order the book, uh, now is the you know their window of opportunity to do that. Um, and with the pre-order, they can get uh, an add-on PDF um, for uh, five bucks as part of the PDF Plus program. So um, they uh, can get a, an immediate look at the book while they're waiting for their, their print book to ship. Uh, so this is a great opportunity. And yeah, books should start showing up in stores um, pretty soon as well. Fantastic. And that's a great system to have so that people can get into it right away rather than waiting. Um, and before we continue on to German icons, we just want to remind everybody that you are welcome to come join us on our discords. For the Banff Discord, it is discord.me slash Banff, dis uh, sorry, Banff podcast. Again, that's discord.me slash Banff podcast. And for the Supers Discord, the sister server, it is discord.me slash supers red. So come and join us and talk. And so let's move into, at this point, the German icons. We understand that it's currently on Kickstarter. So please tell us a bit about that. Yes, OK, so um, I'm going to do just that. Um, the Kickstarter was started um, on Wednesday of last week. Um, the Kickstarter is uh, technically handled by um, the publisher who's got the German publishing rights from Steve you know, to do icons. Uh, in uh, German, and um, the publisher is called Beyond Affinity, um, and so far they've only done uh, fiction books. They've done um, a novel uh, series um, and um, another short novelette, and they had um, a sort of pulp adventure novel series planned at one point, and I understand that is not being continued now, but um, there's a fantasy trilogy called Kleiatomon, um, a very cool um, German writer. I can show you that book some other time. <laughs> I just got it. Um, and now Beyond Affinity is making its first step into the world of um, tabletop RPG books. And um, it's a pretty interesting story how I became part of the project and how I first um, uh, learned about that publisher and found out the whole thing. Um, because um, I had got um, some materials for um, the earlier edition of Icons. And this must have been probably 2012, 2013, and I was looking for um, a few superhero adventures to run at the game conventions I was going to. Um, so I had 
another system I was using at the time, but I didn't have adventures. And then I used some icons materials with the other system um, and they, they fit pretty well. And then, uh, you know, I already knew the brand and I knew the website and things. And um, then I was sort of there on the periphery when Assembled Edition came out. You know, I was, I was aware of mm -hmm. that coming up, but I was not using it. And I think I got my copy in 2015. Um, I read it in PDF first. And I believe the first time I, I read Icons for Real was um, on one of my long train rides when I was on my way back from a convention, because I kept going to many conventions. So I was on the train and I was reading it in PDF. And then later I got it as a physical book, you know, this book that you probably all know, the assembled edition. And um, then when I read it again as um, a physical book, and I enjoyed it even more because uh, it turned out to be one of the things that just, just looked even more appealing when, when I had it as a hardbound book. Um, and I read it another time and then that became sort of my default uh, system you know, to, to use for, for superhero magic. We have another one. That's Dan. Hello, Hello. Dan. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Dan. Hey, thanks. Hey, Dan Hauser's joined us. And for people who might not know, Dan is the, um, um, we call him the art godfather, but I guess his specific title is the line artist for icons. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh, Dan, uh, Norbert was just giving us the skinny on the German translation of icons, which I understand you are involved with. Uh, yes, actually, um, I'm a, I'm a tier you can pay for if you want to get some artwork. Now's the time to do it. Yes, because then um, Dan is going to draw um, the backer's character, um, the character of their choice, a character that they, they create and will want to have a drawing of. And that that's right. On, on the Kickstarter page. Now, I was just about to... Um, Tell everyone how, how I really got to know icons and and you know when I read it and um, why I like it and so on. Um, well, um, like I said, this this was um, around 2015 2016 um, when I was planning to to go to more conventions to kind of keep the superhero flag flying because superheroes are not that well represented at the gaming conventions. You know, it's mostly DM some shadow run some post-apocalyptic things um lots of call of cthulhu going on here kind of um sort of dark depressing and and you know uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, quite it's, the opposite it, from my god it seems it seems to it, it seems to uh, lend itself to sort of german melancholy and so sort of, um Angst. a vast vast portion of um of sort of the the, the gamer uh, landscape here. Um, and I have a friend who, who specifically you know, plays Call of Cthulhu and like wherever he shows up, at, wherever he shows up at every event and every game convention, you know, he's doing Cthulhu and just, just his thing, you know, and I know he won't play anything else. And yeah, we have, we have um, some steampunk going on, we have diesel punk, we have some other weird things and um, usually some, some pretty gritty dark things you know, and, and all the variations of dnd &D. and okay and, and then of course we have the big brands you know we have we have, you know if, if something is to do with game of thrones lord of the rings star wars star trek you know you're also likely to find game sessions with that right because they, they have licensed published games there's a star trek game there's a star wars game of course um but when you get to costumed superheroes and cartoony stuff that is usually a very, very, very small section within a small fandom. Um, and then it's a, we're called elite, by the way. We're yes, called elite, Norbert. Elite. <laughs> That's good. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, at least so, we'd like to think we are. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your posters behind you. You can see that you're elite. It's an <laughs> Amazon princess. What Call of Cthulhu game has that where they don't end up eating your face? Very true. Uh -huh. Very true. Uh -huh. yeah. Friend of mine would love those uh, turtles figures that you have there. <laughs> Can see you, yeah. you know what? I thought they were knockoffs. I actually bought them on eBay as like bootlegs because mm -hmm. the NECA factory in Hong Kong, apparently the workers spent overtime making more figures than they needed and they were selling them. And I thought I was buying bootlegs because the price was just ridiculous. I got them for $80. 
And when I got them, I tested them. I did all the tests, like the, the chest pieces fold, like all the belts are correct. Um, the weapons are actually like two pieces of plastic instead of one. I'm like, my God, I, <laughs> I think they sent me the wrong thing. But uh, no, they were just extras from uh, the, the guy who was selling them had bought like a dozen from uh, Comic-Con, but wasn't really like a reseller. He was just like, I'm going to make a ton of money and found out that only 44 year old dudes really want to have some Ninja Turtle figures from the comics. And I'm like, ha that's why. But they don't have a Casey Jones yet. And that's really bothering me. Like they have foot soldiers, they have Krang, they have Shredder, but they don't have Casey Jones. Interesting. So, yeah. So I am, it's like their convention um, situation. I'm forever searching for Casey Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I was looking for a men's Wonder Woman t-shirt and I had to talk to several dealers. Like all of their Wonder Woman stuff was for ladies or it was for, for little kids. And then uh, I found one guy from, from the Netherlands who, who specifically ordered uh, you know, um, a, a men's you know, gentleman's Wonder Woman logo shirt for me. Yeah, superhero clothes tend to come in kids a lot more than they come in adults. Luckily, I can fit in kids, so we get me a lot of superhero clothes. <laughs> but back to icons. Uh, but I do have a Wonder Woman's male shirt, so yes. that's uh, something awesome. Oh, and Alice is going to show you her Casey Jones Wonder Woman crossover. That's really cool. Oh, and Norbert, um, graffiti. If you email graffiti, they do ship overseas, and they have tons of shirts i got a, a really kick-ass um shazam like chrome uh lightning bolt shirt it's for special occasions that's nice yeah yeah i kept but, going yeah, to, back like, to icons and <laughs> yeah. uh, there's an rpg i've heard what of called called icons can you guys yeah. tell us about that nah, never why don't it. you tell us a bit about the different tiers available in uh the icon super, mm, the yeah. Kickstarter, please. We're opening the, the page again now. So um, this is a modest Kickstarter. You know, we're not asking for a whole lot. Now, the way it's set up now, I mean, um, this is still going for the, the coming 23 days, right? Mm -hmm. 23 days now. It concludes um, midnight on, you know, the, the night from the 16th to the 17th of June. But please do not show up on the 17th. You know, get my, what we're <laughs> for that. Um, and coincidentally, and, uh, it concludes on my birthday. Great. Hmm. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Thank you. Gemini power. Right. So, um, right. Let me see. Um, uh, this, this is all done by, um, Andre from beyond affinity. He, he runs beyond affinity publishing. Um, and I asked him to, um, to, to come here basically to be, be part of this. But he was a bit reluctant to go on uh, a podcast, and uh, anyway, he, he had other things going on today. So um, I'm trying to also speak for him. Now, um, you can, of course, start. Um, well, you can you can send any amount. You know, not tied to, to a particular pledge, um, and, and and that is mentioned up first. And you you can be um, a good Samaritan. It says here in, in German, you can be a good Samaritan, and um, um, you know, um, give us yeah a euro. You know, basically a dollar, a dollar and, and ten cents. So, um, and um, that way you get uh, well, you, you get our thanks. You get our appreciation. Now, um, you can support uh, the book in PDF for ten euros. So, what, what is a euro going for? That's that's a dollar ten, roughly. Right around there. Yeah, right, right around there. So, um, yeah, that's um, that's icons like the, the, the full book um, as a PDF. Um, you can choose print. You know that there's some, it says print is power, um, and um, that's only twenty. Right now, this is much lower than the the book would um, retail for later. Um, if you pledge twenty five euros, you get this book, and you get it in PDF. Sim simultaneously um, and then we we'll move into the artists here oh well, we also have um, an incentive for um, retailers like if any comic book retailers or, or gaming shop retailers would like to give us a chance you know there's, there's something where a retailer can get three copies of a book early um, for 60 um, or they can get let me see that's what can, can can get five 
you can get five copies of the book. Okay, 90 euros. Um, or you can get 10 for a pledge of 150. Um, so just in case. Um, now, um, since we've got Dan here, now, there are now um, four separate um, artists' uh, tiers or levels. Um, and um, we have, um, we have um, Nolan Segres, who did a lot of art for um, Cartoon Action Hour add-ons. You know, oh, I love um, his work. And, yeah, I think he's, um, I have to look it up, but I think he's, he's um, the artist behind uh, Punk Rock Saves the World and so, so some of the other artists you see in, in, in Spectrum Games. Now, um, if you want to support him and us, um, you can select something here um, called um, your own personal hero um, 1.0. So of course yeah, I'm looking at it now, and it has that in, in German, Dein ganz persönlicher Held, which is your your own personal hero. You would get um, the printed book, the PDF, all of the updates. You know, maybe so, something extra we're working on in PDF, like an adventure, and then you'll have a character of your choice, um, like your player character drawn by Nolan, um, and he volunteered to do that for three people. So it's available three times. Um, we also still have uh, Stephen Shepard, who I understand is a good friend of Dan's. Uh, Stephen Shepard is one of my best friends, actually. Yeah. I had no idea who, who reached yeah. out to Steve. That's amazing. Yes. Um, yeah, I, uh, Steve we, did art direction for um, Spectrum Games. and He does um, a lot of work with them, yeah. Yes, right, right. And, um, yeah, I'm also with Spectrum Games. You know, when I'm not supporting icons. Um, but... Um, yeah, so so he will do the same thing. You can select him as your your artist of choice, and he will draw your superhero character. Um, and then we have the big Dan the Man um, pledge level. Um, goes for a little more, but uh, if you if you commit a hundred euros, um, you also get your PDF, your printed book, and um, art by Dan Hauser. That's only for you. Will will not see print anywhere. That's your your own personal creation by Dan. So yep. um, there will be that now. now I, I hope with this um, interview we can we can multiply the number of um, you know backers we, we have so far. Um, like it's it's a small Kickstarter, and um, I also have to say this this would you know if this works out it would be um, um, the the first uh, fully translated um, basically universal superhero system that we have over here in, in German. Because everything that's been done for, for the superhero uh, field was um, you know, a long time ago for um, the Marvel Universe, because that there was a translation of the phase rip Marvel superheroes game. And I tried to look that up um, earlier this week. And um, this was way back in the 80s. This almost coincided with, with the American mm -hmm publishing date, so, so 80s. And it came in um, sort of an orange-yellow box, like, 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 a, like a box children's game. Mm -hmm. and a I like this box, Norbert. Yes, right? and my, Dan uh, is showing us, right? <laughs> yes, there's my personal, I don't know how to make my camera flip around so you could actually read it, but. Yeah, yeah. yeah great. But yes, but yes yeah. Dan is showing us. Excuse my yeah. voice, by the way, uh, I'm yeah. getting over something. I'm, um, surpri I'm surprised there hasn't been a German language superhero RPG since since the that's 80s. Stunning. Yeah, that's stunning. Yeah, uh, that's very surprising. So yes. now that we have a little understanding about the Kickstarter itself, um, everyone in this panel has actually played icons. But for those um, out there that haven't played icons, Steve, would you tell our audience a little bit about it to get them in on the ground floor in case they speak German, read German, and want to pick the uh, translation up? Sure. Or go and pick the English version up. That works too. Yeah, absolutely. See me at a convention. Um, mm -hmm. So um, Icons is a, a fairly simple, fast-playing superhero game. Um, it's uh, primarily uh, it's uh, six uh, um, d six based six sided dice. Um, the standard resolution system um, is that the uh, player will roll a die and add an appropriate uh, ability modifier and the Game master will roll a die and add a difficulty modifier, and you'll um, subtract 
uh, the difficulty from the uh, effort, which is the player's role, uh, and the, the value of that, whether it's a positive or negative number, will determine the outcome, basically how well the character does, whether they succeed or fail, and how much they succeed or fail by. And that's basically the, the core resolution for, for everything uh, in the game, as far as it goes. Um, the, the rest of the game uh, is focused on descriptions of character abilities um, and a, a, a random series of tables for rolling up characters um, so that players uh, can create characters very quickly um, with just a few die rolls uh, to determine the character's abilities and their powers and their options for specialties um, so that um, it's, it's easy to create characters at the table and to start playing right away. Um, when I run icons at conventions, I often will just have players sit down at the table and create characters before we play. Uh, rather than having pre-generated characters, because it's That's fast cool. enough that we can do that. I, I did that too, Steve. I, I, I'm, I'm I'm happy that you're doing that yourself. You know, because um, sometimes we we sat down, we we, ma we made heroes, and um, then we um, were go going through so many options, and then also was explaining a few of the powers, and we got so carried away with like. How cool this hero would look, you know, on on, on a comic book page, and mm -hmm. um, how he could apply all, all these powers and abilities, you know? and so the adventure was usually cut a little bit short, you know, because um, we spent really geeking out about the heroes. <laughs> yes, with, with, with character creation, but um, um, I can I can basically corroborate what what you um, just said because um, it was one of the summer conventions. Um, yeah, I believe uh, two two thousand sixteen was the year, and we were sitting. Um, out next to next to a bit of a yeah a, a lawn space, you know. So, so it was um, a convention at um, a local sort of youth club facility, and they had a playground there and and um, and, and, and and the lawn. And it was uh, the Sunday noon time into early afternoon. Um, so the, the last day of a three day convention, and. Um, you know that that that's where I had one of my best icon sessions, and um, I had brought along um, the characters um, that you probably know uh, from the book. You know, mm -hmm. your, your Arctic Fire and um, yeah. all American, the, the characters that appear in there um, as your your sample uh, heroes. Um, and I would have had something else prepared anyway, but I told my players, you know, this has a random role creation system. Um, but um, it's not that hard, you know, you roll, roll your d6 and let's just see what you get. Um, and um, then we found out that everyone got something really cool. Mm -hmm. So um, it, was, it was basically not possible to roll something that didn't get you started or did, didn't, didn't make you happy or excited about a comic book hero. And I yeah. remember one guy actually um, um, arranged his abilities. So he was, um, what do you call it? Like an abomination from D and D, who who existed in a tank, like in a water mm -hmm. tank. Telepathy was really strong, so he, yep. he would communicate with everyone outside him. But he was he was uh, stuck in his tank. Um, I, that's he, one of the things I like about um, character creation and icons because um, I had a, a player at one of my tables um, who basically said um, that he wouldn't have come up with the character that he rolled up if he had just been told to make up a superhero character. Well, and that's um, where and that's, uh, Mr. Oh. Icons himself, Saguaro the Man Cactus, comes from, right? As a, yes, a as a matter of fact. Roles. Yeah, yeah. Saguaro yeah. was, was a, a random rolled character from a convention game. And, and I did uh, want to point out to our audience who may not have played this game um, the way that we're talking, there is something different about the character generation system in Icons versus the standard um, the standard premise of most character generation systems in most pen and papers, which is the default system in this is completely random generation. And I don't mean that you're just just randomly generating stats like in D and D where you're you know your strength dex etc., but your powers and your entire character by default is randomly generated, so you can just step in with people who don't have, who don't know what they want to play and roll it, or they can choose to do the emulation system, which takes a little bit more work. But this is just a get it and go, like like you were saying, Steve. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I find that the the random generation system 
provides an interesting uh, springboard for people's imaginations because they'll get these particular combinations of powers and abilities. And then it's like, okay, now make up a hero that explains all of this and makes it all work. And, and people come up with all sorts of interesting things. Yeah, and sometimes two hours later they go, I can't believe I decided to do this. <laughs> yeah, nice. absolutely. Like right, Norbert said, I, you know, you end up with, you know, I can't believe I'm playing a telepathic brain in a tank, but mm -hmm. you know, this is what I've come up with. Yeah. I, my first character, I, I luckily, because I'm the artist, I get to put him in the book, but Atomic Roach. Um, he's in a module called Gangbusters that me and a very amazing writer who should just be lauded, Chris McGrory, we wrote Gangbusters together. And uh, Whatever, yeah. I, I miss Chris McGrory. Is he still around? I heard that he uh, got famous for making hang glider stunts over in uh, Russia now. Yeah, he's doing like Tosh.0 oh, style videos over that's crazy. Wow. And writing, he's writing, so he's like Tolstoy, only less drunk and more hang gliders. <laughs> um, but seriously though, no, uh, <laughs> good one, Mike. <laughs> but yes, Atomic Roach was the first character I rolled. I, I, I got, when, I, when um, I was officially like told, yeah, you can do the project because the person who said that said, he's gonna do all the art. He doesn't care. Oh, he gets paid. He seems to be a fan of Steve's. I was like, yes, I'll do whatever. Whatever, just give it to me. And he's like, okay. I drew Saguaro the second we were talking about it. Yes, that gives you literally. The, I was like, here, what do you think of this? <laughs> I, I, I simply mentioned Saguaro in an, uh, an online chat. And literally within the hour, Dan was like, hey, I drew this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just a, the whole system, the whole idea again. I was like, man, I was right back to being ten with my box of Marvel superheroes. I'm like, oh my god! But only, but now with us with the assembled edition, uh, with um, assembled edition, you get so much more. It's it's like you're building with with more with uh, bigger blocks that you can break down into smaller pieces. So it's like you get mm -hmm. the the flavor of a character, and you can actually go, okay, I maybe I don't want burrowing and flight and pigeon talking. I'll just take burrowing and all the little pieces of that, and I'll make that character out of those several things that connect to burrowing. It's right now. It's like, it's amazing. I, I love it. Um, character creation is great. And then uh, Atomic Roach was. I have leaping. I have uh, affliction, and I have immunity to radiation. I was like, what's that? I'm like a jumping cockroach, maybe? And I was like, oh, the Atomic Roach. He wears like a suit, like the Rocketeer, and he fights crime. But he's really like overzealous and clumsy, like kind of like somebody I know and. Like gets way ahead of themselves, does crazy things, and I was like, yeah, so it was fun. And then Chris, the amazing writer person that I told you about, um, yeah, he, we integrated him into Gangbusters, which actually Norbert came up. Just, in fact, that actually came up just the other day with a question regarding uh, Rise of the Phalanx. I was like, man, I haven't thought about Gangbusters in a while. And I forgot where I came up with a villain for uh, for Gangbusters. Like, oh crap, that's where he's from. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long twisted tale for a, for a, a game without a universe. I have created a lot of universes. It's it's actually kind of useful that um, Marvel superheroes, the original Marvel superheroes game, is is known in Germany because Icons oh, owes a lot of its inspiration yeah. to that style of game. I'm, so I mentioned Icons in um, a Marvel specific Facebook group, you know, and you know, just in case because I figured. You know, I, I'll share the news about the Kickstarter in the role-playing game groups, but also in the comic book fan groups. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there were several for Marvel, where, of course, people would now talk about the Marvel movies um, and you know, anything Marvel, like uh, merchandise, you know, and, and, you know, very often the uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. But I said, okay, this is my Marvel crowd now, and, you know, um, maybe someone remembers the game. Um, and um, sure enough, you know, I, I mentioned it in there, and there was one guy who said, "Yeah, I, I think I had that." You know, it was a long time ago, but um, interesting that um, you would do something like that. So, um, not a huge reaction, but you know, you get one or two people in there who say, "Yeah, there that, that, that was something. You know, it was a role-playing game with Marvel, um, but you know, discontinued a long time ago, and, and the publisher doesn't exist anymore. You know, it was a board game publisher." like I said, in, in the 80s. And only one of my friends from back in high school, he, he had a copy of that. Um, so um, the uh, the superhero games that, that you have over in, in America are somewhat known. I mean, you, you, you can find them, and, and people have uh, played them here. This is, this is, this is um, 
um, a, a fraction of, of the fandom who just know English really well, or who have mm -hmm. basically taught themselves to, to read English with, with gaming books um, and, and maybe comics. Oh, there's another one with Saguaro. Apologize about that. My phone was ringing for some reason. Yeah, that's the. Um, I'm, I'm sharing the screenshot of Swaharo and yeah. Spider Fridge. I focused, oh, yeah. <laughs> I focused in from, for our audience to see. From the unfortunately ill fated team up book. Alice, uh, oh. you, it's not showing up on your side, by the way. Oh, I focused in. Yeah, well, I'm only doing it for the broadcasting, so don't worry. The broadcast will oh. see it. Oh. Yeah. I'm focusing in for broadcast people. But yeah, as for, you know, icons, uh, we did have an actual play uh, that was an Easter special uh, since, you know, all sorts of holidays get holiday issues, but Easter isn't really one of them. Uh, Alice and I uh, put together a game. Um, she played I Ran, uh, where uh, we had uh, three heroes go up <clears throat> and just solve some Easter hijinks. And it's supposed to be very Silver Age comedy, which is, you know, I think a lot of the genre of, of icons is supposed to be that kind of wackiness. As, you know, you get Saguaro the Man Cactus and, you know, mm -hmm. the Atomic Roach, these powers that you're like, how do these work together? And so I had people just roll the characters up randomly and uh, we, we had a good time. And there's two two episodes up on a BAMP podcast of, of that play through. Nice. Yeah, nice. That's a good, that's a good yeah. time. Yeah, for anyone who you know wants to see how icons it's played, we do have that actual play up for people from on Banff. Yeah, we've yeah, had a few cool. over the year. I'll, I'll make sure to okay. highlight that on. Uh, yeah, on please here. do. But I think I I think if I remember right, Dan, and, and I'm an old man with a feeble memory, but I think we were talking <laughs> on AM one day trying to come up with a character, and we rolled like wall crawling and ice control, and somehow we came up with spider fridge. <laughs> I want to yeah, say, and it was. Yeah, uh, I think the story is Spider Fridge is the, was the secretary of a uh, private eye. It was a cocktail fridge, <laughs> and she haunts it. And she, yeah. but the thing is that there's limitations to her powers. Is that no one can watch her actually do anything. If somebody's watching her. The Spider Fridge can't do anything. Like blink, right? Mm -hmm. But if you look away. There's a tied up bad guy with a saguaro right. and, and they fridge like, like glowing. Spider fridge is like the ultimate photo bomb. Well, I gotta say, that doesn't make the character I ended up with feel near as weird. <laughs> I, I, I feel much better about my character, my one shot character now. So, uh, who ended up getting dubbed as Stripper Fella. Stripper Fella, nice. <laughs> well, I, I had. Um, I had drain, so I decided that it would be based on skin contact, and mm -hmm. so basically he would take off his shirt whenever mm -hmm. it was combat time, so that they would make yeah. certain more skin contact more effective. Skin. Sure. Exactly. Next <laughs> mentality. So, so it became stripper fella, and I'm like two hours, and I'm like I can't believe I chose to play this character. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. I'm never gonna live this down. Alice, Doom Patrol is for you. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my god, Doom Patrol I watched is Doom Patrol. So yeah, good. we'll have to talk about that oh, in another man. episode. Someone had, had shown me um, a few photos of people in body painting, like really cool body painting. And um, then I made a note for like qualities because Icons has these qualities on, on the character sheet. So one, one of my, my, my secret uh, qualities, which, uh, which I haven't used so far, is my costume is really painted on. <laughs> right? It's not fabric. <laughs> Well, I could have oh. used that. Then I wouldn't oh. have look so naked. <laughs> uh, are those, Captain, are those his balls? He's bad, man. Just be quiet. I, I remember this little uh, comic strip about, you know, the in the X-Mansion and in the middle of the night, the alarm goes off and they have to go. And they're like, Psylocke, come on. And she's like getting my costume on and she's there with a paintbrush, literally. <laughs> <laughs> she's melting like rubber gloves. <laughs> Did you guys hear their... Um... They're canceling all the X titles and yeah. relaunching them. Yep. Yes. Again. Again. Yep. But for realsies this time. Yeah, for it's going to be X fifty two. Oh gosh. Uh, Anything yeah. with the new fifty two or X fifty two that that's going to like you know, yeah. You fifty two seems like a how curse. Rage filled <laughs> I am about Shazam. Like Captain Marvel being changed in the way he was for the for the most recent iteration. It's like mm -hmm. yeah. I wanted to punch that kid in the face. Oh I'm yeah, like, yeah, me that. too. The movie did it great. The movie Dan, did a little scallywag, but in the comics, I, I, I wish Superman would just come back and go because he kills people now. So whatever, you or are awesome, in the face, Because that's what you do. 
Yeah, the, the Shazam movie w mm. uh, was based off the same uh, iteration of, uh, uh, of um, sh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Billy Bassett and uh, yeah. the New 52. Yeah. And I hated that movie with a passion. I walked out of that really? movie angry. I was I was okay with that Billy Batson being kind of a like a loner and like lost and at the end he joins the family. I was like, oh look, they put joy in the movie. Oh but, my god! But the, oh, but the street performance that that was just that, so. I mean, I, I came, I grew up on the old Billy Batson of the yeah, you know. You would have done that. He'd have been like, golly gee, I better get to my radio show. <laughs> the buttons are at it again, and we got to fight yeah. overseas. Hmm. Yeah, I, I know, and oh, but what's great, DC Universe, the uh, the streaming service has every episode of Shazam. The live yeah, action 70s, the old beautiful live action feathered Shazam hair. Yep. But, Love to watch that. Oh, I so, uh, it, is pretty I cool. will give you my password to borrow and you can watch it to your heart's content. Oh, it's we, we pre-ordered. Yeah, we pre-ordered it, so we got the extra three months for the year. 15 nice. months for, for a year. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Doom yeah, Patrol yeah. was a when I started watching Doom Patrol, I'm like, this makes up for Titans. True. Okay. Doom Patrol okay. is just un, just like ridiculously good, and it I is. don't know it, why. It, I don't know what's is. happened there. It's the Guardians of the Galaxy and Iron Man of whatever DC's trying to do, uh -huh. yeah. which is Doom weird because how do you tie more stuff into Doom Patrol? Well, is there anything else you wanted to cover about icons, or um, did Steve want to revisit anything about the expanse before we close up on um, the topic of the day? I think Mike wanted to, me to talk a little bit about icons rogues. Go um, ahead, please so, do. Uh, what is rogues, icons rogues? Why? I'm so glad you asked, Brandon. Um, icons rogues is uh, a new villain collection um, much like uh, the adversaries source book uh, that dan and i have been working on and uh, dan is in the process of finishing up the last few pieces of art for it it'll be done today all right sweet um in fact, and, you go to my, not, not to plug but retro station 1989 is my youtube channel i'm going to be drawing up uh, the last dudes today and coloring them and showing techniques in photoshop so awesome because i need to create content and i I'll get these done. <laughs> People can see the uh, the final pieces being finished up live, um, yep. and uh, then it's just a matter of uh, uh, finishing up the the layout and proofreading, and uh, we'll be getting things into production. So, hopefully, you know, I mean, icons, you know, projects tend to come out when they're done, <laughs> um, but uh, I, hopefully, I'm, I'm uh, working very hard. But that's um, not the case. Rogues will be out uh, next month on uh, Drive Through RPG. We should get you back on to talk about that. Yes, yeah, cool. Be, uh, th this this format or um, yeah. equal length uh, as adversaries? Uh, it'll probably be a little shorter than adversaries. Um, I think that it's it's about uh, 140 pages, roughly, um, once fine. it's all said and done. But in that you know sort of ballpark. More villains. Yes, lots more definitely. villains, uh, and rogues definitely. And not so not not so villainy. <laughs> Well, some not so villainy, um, and Rogues definitely does a few more um, sort of uh, cosmic and high-level villains, and a few more you know sort of experimental things to to give folks some different different stuff to play around with. Cool. How yeah. many of the Rogues are, were randomly generated by you guys? I didn't randomly generate any of them. Truth be told, oh. um, I, I made them all up. Although a lot of it is you know. Um, is sort of random generation because occasionally it will just be, Dan will be like, hey, I drew this guy. <laughs> and I'll be like, okay, I'll make up powers and a name for them. You know? I will say I will say the one random thing, uh, there's a team of bad guys that are kind of like the evil uh, new mutants called oh, the, the rivals. rivals. Yeah. And literally, the guy, I was like, okay, I based the female off of a character from a comedy from the 80s. I was like, okay, playlist, give me names for guys. And so... It stayed in the ska section, so you've got um, Time Bomb, Ghost Town, Stray Jacket. So there's a lot of, uh, it was randomly generated, like, okay, I'll draw that. And that's what I drew. I was like, I needed a team, because originally Steve said the, the name of the books would be Rivals. I'm like, that's really cool. And he said, now it's Rogues. I'm like, okay, that's also cool, but I'm going to steal that name. <laughs> and maybe we can put it in the book. Yep. Also, I'll show you something here. I'm uh, stoked about next Friday, because next Friday, we get to have... Coming back in our lives has been gone for a very long time. Ooh. Godzilla. And uh, I'd show you. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. Yeah, I I'm can gonna, see I'm it. I'm going to do a full color version of this for a print. 
for our audience to see. That's pretty spiffy, man. There you I'll, go. Uh, I'll throw a link That's up. really cool. Yeah. I'm going to do a full color one, so I'll have prints of it at um, conventions and such. I'm also going to have, um, at the next convention I go to, which is RockCon in Rockford, Illinois, I'm going to have original Icons artwork. Do you color by hand, or do you color on no. Photoshop? Yeah, you know, um, I started doing uh, sketches mm -hmm. on paper, just to, because it was more, um, more efficient to get that part of the workflow done at my day job when there's downtime. Mm -hmm. uh, so... I do the pencils on paper, but everything else is digital. I use oh, uh, Manga cool. Studio X and Clip Studio for the ink, and then the colors and finishes are done in Photoshop. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Well, hey, just, just to wrap up, um, you should go to Kickstarter and check out the German translation. Uh, what's the easiest way to find that at Kickstarter, uh, Norbert? Well, you type in Icons RPG, and there's, there's something after that. But um, if you look for Icons RPG, it should basically show you that page. And then it has like an explanation saying German license edition, all of that. Um, there is a text that I prepared um, in German, which um, includes sort of the text you see on, on the back cover, um, mentioning basically what, what it's all about, main strengths and specifics, and then kind of um, why we'd like to do it and, and how you play it, um, mentions the you know, D6 resolution system and a few more things and you can always get in touch with us on uh facebook you can you can go to the uh, beyond affinity facebook page you can contact me on facebook i'm there under my real name um you can write to uh andre um on the beyond affinity website probably could give you that that website later um and let's see um he's not on twitter i'm on twitter but I use Facebook mostly. Um, yeah, and also um, I, I wanted to mention that um, the text of um, the assembled edition is finished. You know, I, I wrapped it up in April, and um, we've done a few edits now. In fact, I edited one word uh, last night you know, that um, didn't come out quite right. Um, anyway, the, the glossary and all of that is pretty much professionally finished and um, it has gone through two rounds of proofreading. Um, so uh, this, this great guy walk on it, he, he goes by the nickname of Roach and he, he loved that, that there was an atomic Roach in the book. Nice. <laughs> and um, yes, yeah, so, um, so so he's read it, yeah. And um, I, um, I also heard um, earlier this week that um, if indeed um, we do not make the funding goal, um, you know, in, in this Kickstarter. Um, that does not mean that uh, uh, we'll bury the project or anything, you know, because you know, we've, we've done all this work. Um, so um, Andre said, um, if, if really the, this doesn't succeed, um, we, we still um, want to do icons in PDF. So it'll go straight to PDF and it, it will be a German edition on drive through RPG. And then, you know, um, hopefully at a, at a later point, you know, people can get it in print on demand or something. But right now, if you if you want to support this, you would also support it in such a way that we'll get a printed product uh, that we can show at conventions, you know, and actually put on the table and show to retailers. So that would be nice. If you're an Icons fan, you want to uh, give a boost to Icons in general, uh, back to Kickstarter. If you want to get some uh, gorgeous and sumptuous Dan Hauser art that will only appreciate in value after he dies, um, make <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying, oh my God, Mike? You're no, horrible, no. Mike. You're horrible. I'm going to let him finish all the art before I send the ninjas. Um, 100 euros. I'm dealing with it. Uh, so Dan, you got it. You can never stop drawing. Then you'll live forever. Oh, oh gosh, you wonderful. put the glasses on. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, glasses are on. Ninjas can't find them now. Exactly. All right, sounds good. Well, hey, um, I think we should. Wrap up. Order, you bastard! I knew it. Yes, I think we should wrap up as it's well. Been that you come at me. We have actual better not miss. I have a teeny <laughs> tiny infinity gauntlet. <laughs> that's that's like a Donald Trump size infinity gauntlet. <laughs> it's, it's the Infinity Finger Puppet. All right. More political than I like to get in the puppet. No podcast. puppet. No puppet. You're the puppet. Okay. I, wrapping up. Thanks, <laughs> everyone, for tuning in. Uh, Steve, Norbert, Dan, always a pleasure to have you guys. You're right. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa.
<laughs> Alright, no puppets. No one can match Dan's well, sign off. <laughs> Dan, do you, you want to wrap it up? No, I mean, I Dan, do you, want to, do you want to do the sign off? You want to spread my life some more? Everyone is treasonous, and uh, back to Kickstarter, I'll have you uh, rested. That's it. Oh my god. We done? <laughs> Okay, I'm hitting the okay. I'm hitting the stop button now before it gets right. worse.